in today's webinar, we're going to be talking about uh, autonomous vehicles and how computer vision is enabling autonomous vehicles to become a reality. It's a deep field. So in, in this webinar, I, I'm going to be walking you guys through uh, what autonomous vehicles are just uh, to make sure that we are all on the same page with what, what is an autonomous vehicle and how can we see an autonomous vehicle and, uh, and understand the benefits of an autonomous vehicle, which when an autonomous vehicle comes into road, what, what are the benefits that we're going to be seeing and uh, benefits that we may already know or we could already guess and benefits that we may not know. We would be uh, touching them a bit and uh, the technologies that en enable an autonomous vehicle. From there on, uh, we would be getting into uh, computer vision. What is a com what is computer vision and uh, and what is the process flow for computer vision? What is it like? Uh, so where, there we're going to be talking about uh, what is a generic process flow or uh, right from uh, the first stage in the computer vision to to delivering uh, the output for a specific task uh, what are the processes involved in between and uh, we're going to be doing a small open cv case study i i, I shall uh, introduce you uh, to open study for those of you who don't know what that is and um, and how we can use open cv for computer vision and how it has been uh, there uh, in the industry supporting majority of the computer vision engineers and uh, we are also going to be seeing a case study which uh, where we're going to be seeing an application where the open cv libraries would be used to solve a real world uh, problem in autonomous vehicles so that's going to be fun uh, moving on uh, uh, we are also going to be uh, speaking about how you can become a computer vision engineer and if you wanted to become a computer vision engineer what are the uh, requirements and what are the topics that you, you need to know uh, to become a computer vision engineer and uh, last, last but not the least uh, we're going to be speaking about the scope of a computer vision engineer in the current industry um, what would a computer vision engineer do and what are industries could he or she be applying to uh, we're going to be uh, walking through all these topics in today's webinar to start with uh, an autonomous vehicles uh, is something that can sense your environment and navigate without human intervention so to put it another way an autonomous vehicle is essentially uh, a vehicle without a driver right uh, yeah it, Imagine it like this. You don't have your steering wheel. You don't have your brake accelerator or uh, any any system that uh, that a driver uses and uh, Imagine you having a dining table inside the computer or a work table inside a computer and uh, Imagine a space like that that can move or to put it another way a train, right? You're gonna be sitting in a train with with uh, with the seats facing each other and then it just moves and without any intervention It just moves by itself uh, so autonomous vehicles are essentially viewed as robots which can sense the environment uh, which can take decisions uh, and it can also aid the human being in many other ways while you are in the vehicle and also while you're outside the vehicle autonomous vehicle the concept of autonomous vehicles vehicles being self-driven there's no necessary for a driver and uh, a consensus was reached around a decade ago uh, on this that yes we can uh, we should be moving ahead with this a lot of companies started showing a huge amount of interest in this and uh, engineers and researchers in SAE put together six levels of uh, uh, autonomous way uh, automation in autonomous vehicles so we are say at, at the very least uh, at the level zero where there's no automation everything has to be done by the driver and then the the other end of the spectrum is full automation where everything is done by the vehicle by by itself uh, and in between these two as you can see on the presentation you have two icons here so one is the uh, icon of a driver uh, so this indicates that uh, for this particular action, which is here in this case, steering, acceleration, and basic controls, a driver would be giving his or her input. And on the other end of the spectrum is a full automation where everything is taken by the car. Currently, uh, we are somewhere in between level two and three, uh, between partial automation and level two automation. Some examples of partial automation where the vehicle takes control um, of steering acceleration and basic controls would be features like lane keep assist adaptive cruise control emergency braking um, 
a few uh, traction control. So these things where the vehicle decides for yourself uh, based on what it can sense in the environment, uh, those features could come under the steering acceleration and basic control features. And then the environmental perception is some, uh, as of today, uh, Tesla has a uh, autopilot out there, which can sense the environment, which can see for the vehicles, which can take decisions like uh, shifting lanes, taking an exit in the freeway, which in Indian version would be like a highway where you would be taking the, the service lane and uh, trying to uh, get out from the highway into the city. So uh, these kind of decisions are also in addition taken. So for which you essentially need environmental perception, which means that you need to know what's around you and where you are and how you have to be navigating through the environment given to you. Yeah, how, how you'd be navigating the environment given, given to you. Yeah, uh, and moving from point A to point B based on the objective. So moving on to the next slide, uh, the benefits of autonomous vehicles are uh, reduction of human error prone accidents. So most of the accidents, like in fact, 95 or maybe even more the accidents are due to human error we are human beings we are born to error whether it's your error or whether it's the other person who's who, who's who's driving the vehicle is going to collide into your vehicle uh most of the accidents are due to human error uh drop in harmful emissions so here uh there are multiple ways uh an ideal driving behavior on road would lead to the least amount of emission that the vehicle can give so uh, based on your driving behavior, based based on how you rev up the vehicle or based on how you control the vehicle, the emission levels is going to change. So once you hand over the control to a machine, it's going to take care of the best possible emission. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a significant drop in uh, emission. And with the current trend of vehicles moving towards uh, electric vehicles, and there's, there's definitely going to be a drop that way as well. And eliminate human error prone uh, traffic conditions majority of the traffic conditions that we see on road is is due to human error like somebody wants to take a shift in the lane somebody is is suddenly slowing down for no reason or somebody uh, is seeing something very interesting on the road and wants to slow down uh, just so that he or she can take a better look at it so these things uh, lead to traffic conditions which uh, we may not really see it uh, firsthand but then these things add up and then which would result in a huge traffic condition so an improved fuel economy uh, as i said earlier uh, about emissions uh, an an ideal driving behavior can lead also lead to the optimized fuel consumption where uh, you wouldn't be really sp uh, spending as much fuel as you would when a human driver drives in an erratic fashion where the driving uh, style consumes more fuel and then uh, increase lane capacity so this is this is another very important thing because uh, right now we tend to maintain a gap of so at least here in the united states uh, we tend to maintain a gap of about easy 10 meters between the, uh, one vehicle and the other and uh, that that is so that you give some space for uh, the other human driver to make an error if he or she suddenly breaks the car or uh, up, wants to shift lane you give the buffer space for such errors and when when a machine has taken control of the car and one machine can communicate with the other this particular lane capacity can be increased by squeezing more cars in in a limited space by essentially reducing the space between one car and the other and consumer savings uh, so these things like uh, things like fuel increased lane capacity and one per like multiple people using the same uh, same car could all add up to savings in terms of money uh, to the consumer so challenges are numerous in uh, autonomous vehicles so uh, as we are still transitioning towards autonomous vehicles and autonomous vehicles as i had mentioned earlier are, are in essence uh, are robots so uh, robots would definitely require sensors to perceive the environment that you are in and the sensors are complicated because we human beings have evolved over thousands and thousands probably even millions of years to develop certain qualities that we we see and we perceive about our environment so developing a machine that can mimic or probably even do it better than us uh, would require a lot of sensors that which are in turn expensive 
and also there are multiple things that adds on to the cost of the census one of the thing uh, one of the major place where a lot of cost is added are uh, to the vehicle is the processor then the second challenge would be the weather condition so um, even the human visibility are uh, drops in times of fog and when there's rain and when there's snow uh, this could be another challenge and for autonomous vehicles traffic conditions and laws could change from one place to another for example a car that is made to to be driven around in the united states may not be readily applicable to indian roads for example over here people use stop signs and there are, there are specific speed limits in on the highway there's a low speed limit as well and then there's higher speed limit which may not be really applicable to other countries or a lot of uh, even in the case of tesla the uh, the, the the traffic rules uh, very, very different between united states and europe so uh, where a uh, lot of custom models are built that can uh, address those conditions and then regulations uh, as you can see in the picture which is a little funny right uh, the cop pulls over the car and then uh, asks the person to step or driver to step out and there's no driver there and uh, so such accident liabilities and regulations could also be a, a, a challenge that has to be addressed uh, when autonomous vehicles come into the picture and cyber security is a very important field as as we all know the data security and cyber security and data theft uh, cyber terrorism and these things are a huge concern when a car is functioning as a computer it is prone to the same same danger or same threat that a, that a, any other computer that that you see is prone to servers are prone to so uh, cyber security is another field where technology presents a challenge and it, it, it's also an obstacle to autonomous vehicles becoming a reality so these are the areas that are being worked on and also uh, you know uh, are obstacles that will be worked on in the future for the autonomous vehicles to become a reality now that we've seen the obstacles what do we think uh, are the enablers what by enablers i mean things that enable the system to become an autonomous vehicle enable the robot to navigate by itself so one of the important uh, concept required is vehicle to vehicle communication uh, that is very important given that all the vehicles are going to be uh, be robots and uh, they got to be communicating with each other to know where one is respective to the other and how, how change in one vehicle's path would affect the other vehicle so a good amount of communication and engagement is required between vehicles on road so that they do not commit any mistake and sensors active and passive sensors are both required to uh, enable an autonomous vehicle and by active sensors i mean sensors that that are like cameras and then uh, by passive sensors passive sensors can be anything that uh, in turn like which is which are directly not involved in autonomous vehicles and advanced environment mapping is required uh, if you see today's gps uh, many of us would have gone through this problem when we are using google maps or any other maps for that matter um, you would miss a turn easily right like you would miss a turn and map would take some there would be a lag between you seeing the map and the map responding um, uh, with the right route and then you would you would miss the turn and these kind of uh, uh inaccuracies cannot be there for a machine when a machine is navigating through so there should be high precise mapping and a lot of accuracy by that i mean like accuracy to the levels of few centimeters or, or meter is required for an autonomous vehicle to navigate and complex processing systems as i had already mentioned uh processing systems can get really complex because the sensors that we're going to see an idle camera is going to uh, give you uh, frames at 30 frames per second which is a lot of information given that every pixel takes at least 8 bits and then you have these high resolution cameras which is going to pump in like millions of pixels at once and then the processor should be able to process such an influx of information which is going to be a lot given that you have cameras you have other sensors such as radar uh, lidar then you have the sound based sensors and then uh, ultrasonic sensors and then you have many other sensors uh, running in real time 
where it is very important for the processing system to be really quick in taking the decision. And then the infrastructure, so for an autonomous vehicle, as you agreed upon, uh, it, the vehicle is going to be like a robot. So robots need of specific infrastructure, a uniform infrastructure to function. It shouldn't be surprised with uh, any alterations to the uh, roads or anything that it has not seen before. So an infrastructure is also required to enable such a technology. Uh, the objective is the vehicle shown in the red circle uh, has to shift its lane from the current lane, uh, which is the leftmost lane, to the uh, to the middle lane. Right. So the question is, what should the driver or the controller, uh, as we call it in the case of an autonomous vehicle, um, consider before this decision is made, uh, before moving from this particular lane towards the other lane, what all should it see? So as we move on to the next slide, so we will see a few of the answers that I thought would be necessary, Those, though these things do not cover a few of the answers that uh, I, uh, we just received from the participants. Uh, those, those are really valid answers. I did not add all the possibilities, which, which, are, which is very complex. So I have added few. Uh, one is object detection. First, the vehicle has to detect what are the objects around it. Uh, as you see, uh, there are like two cars ahead and then there's one car behind. As one of the answers that we got, we, we should be mindful of the car behind and also ahead of us. And second thing is the objects parameters, vehicle acceleration and the path planning of the of of the cars. So when we when we negotiate a turn or when we when we shift from one lane to another as a human being, uh, we do put some level of trust on the other person, right? Okay, I'm gonna turn now. This is this person is not going to do something ridiculous that might end up being dangerous for me so in in when when it comes to machines though the that's where the vehicle to vehicle communication comes in play so if i if this particular car that we spoke about earlier the black car that we see in the left the leftmost lane wants to change the lane it, it would have to know what the other vehicles are up to right if the vehicle is going to cruise straight through or like imagine the vehicle behind uh, it is communicating to the black car, hey, I'm going to maintain a speed of 60 kilometer per hour. And um, if if you are going a little faster than me, you're, you're, you're more than safe to, uh, at least from my end, to make the lane switch. Now, that uh, level of uh, parameters are required, uh, like velo velocity, acceleration, and path planning of other vehicles. And vehicle controls is, is another thing that an autonomous vehicle has to take care of right like the, its own vehicle controls like steering change and acceleration braking and and whatnot the indicator that somebody had mentioned uh, so these are the controls of the vehicle that uh, an autonomous vehicle should be able to uh, take care of and then yeah it should it should also run a check and and be sure that it controls it is in place to to do the turn and self positioning is very important uh, it should know its position uh, say in a global coordinate system or in a in a local coordinate system, it should be able to know its position with respect to other vehicle and also its own uh, position so that when it makes the turn, it should know precisely where it's going to end up and it should know its position every microsecond or even every nanosecond where it is and where it's going to be in the next moment. And then uh, a path decision. So a turn can be made in multiple ways uh, at multiple speed. A particular path decision has to be made. And then uh, ideally it has to be communicated to the other vehicles as well. And then so that uh, everybody is aware and such safety is uh, is ensured in such a decision.